I don't know what's worse. When you're in an argument with a loved one, if you lash out in anger or give them the silent treatment. And the silent treatment is what we're going to talk about today on Ask the Fairy. This is where real people send in real letters to me and I answer them in a way that everyone can hear. And if you like, you can weigh in in the comments section with kindness, all right, with kindness and love and support for these vulnerable letter writers who have done us the honor of sharing what they're going through with CPTSD for our benefit. All right, so today's letter is from a guy named Bob who's 31 years old. And Bob says, my girlfriend left me in October last year. The reason she gave was that we couldn't communicate and she was right. Throughout our four-year relationship, whenever I felt threatened by criticism, I became triggered and dysregulated, although I didn't recognize what was happening in those terms at the time. I would shut down and ignore my girlfriend for over 24 hours at a time. Only when I was too exhausted to be angry anymore would we make up, but I would continue to hold on to subconscious resentment. This happened on several occasions until, just as you describe in your videos, my girlfriend no longer felt comfortable to raise her concerns and our connection withered. So today I can see that my behavior was unacceptable and even manipulative. However, I deeply regret the fact that I made no effort to educate myself about this sooner. Stonewalling, as I've since learned the tactic is called, is an old habit for me. After experiencing repeated rejections for being overly emotional as a child, I started to shut myself off from my mother in the same way. She passed away when I was 16. That is so young. I desperately wanted to stop this pattern of behavior of closing myself off from people I love until one day they're gone. And I'm left alone with feelings of profound guilt and shame. I never want to hurt myself or anyone else like this again. But the thought arises that deep down, I'm a monster who will do the same thing to the next woman in my life. The tactics you discuss are great tools, which I plan to use the next time I'm triggered. But what can I do to let go of my shame instead of adding it to the pile? How do I learn to be honest and vulnerable with a future partner without appearing broken or messy or damaged goods? Please keep up the great work. Sincerely, Bob. Thank you, Bob. I think you're actually in a wonderful place. Um, I think sometimes when we get our hearts broken, we become extremely teachable. And you have just been given a gift to that's going to push you to start learning how to stay regulated in a conflict in, in the relationship and to do things differently at last. Now, I don't know what caused your mom to reject you when you were little, but I'm guessing that's what gave you CPTSD is whatever you did as a small kid who couldn't have possibly have done things better, it caused you to get rejected. And I don't blame you at all for learning to cope with it by just withdrawing. That seems like a very sensible strategy for a little kid. And it's a terrible strategy for a boyfriend or husband. So this is so good. You're in the right place. Um, you sound to me like you get dysregulated. So I want to take it from the part where you said you feel shame and you want less shame and work backwards from there. So shame you, you know, in the techniques I teach, the daily practice, we deal with fear and resentment. And resentment can be directed to other people or at ourselves. And that's what shame is. It's resentment itself. Now, how, when, when, when we've written that and gotten to the fear underneath, what, you, what you'll almost always find is that there's free-floating shame that isn't really from anything you did. It's just kind of like a, a fearful idea that you should be ashamed. And then there's earned shame, and that is from something you did that you feel bad about. And the earned shame sort of sets the other shame on fire, and it feels like this giant, you know, explosion of shame. But actually, it's just a couple things you did. And when you work on those, when you clear them up, you'll find that all this stuff just sort of evaporates, and it's not really a thing anymore. And that's how to reduce your overall shame. So... That's how you can deal with what you're feeling about this right now. Like, oh, I screwed up and I should have done better. And you know what? I mean, everybody says this, but I'm going to tell it to you again. You couldn't have done better. You had to get your heart broken for you to take seriously that there was a better way than just going silent. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if, if you know, going, going silent, it's a coping mechanism. You were probably trying to spare both of you from something worse, like a big explosion. Um, hoping the silent treatment was somehow more innocent. And the weird thing is, 
the silent treatment is just as aggressive as yelling. It actually is. It really hurts people. Um, for people, for other people who have CPTSD, it can, it can be crazy making when somebody won't talk to you. A couple, yes, people, couples need to talk to each other about what's bothering them. That is how the connection stays alive. So if you can't talk about it because one person's going to flip out, you know, or go silent, this, the other person becomes afraid to say how they really feel about things. And yes, the connection withers, as you said. So to be a good partner, we've got to be somebody you can talk to, even if the person has something critical for us. And taking criticism is not our strong suit. <laughs> it can feel life and death when somebody's got a problem. Like it just triggers like old abandonment and rejection wounds. And it gets very like out of proportion. The monster does come out. So so here's the task in front of you. It's, it's really quite finite. And it's to learn to tolerate the, the uncomfortable feeling of somebody being unhappy with you. And I don't mean to go silent or pretend it's not happening, but to tolerate it without going to your coping mechanism behavior that causes breakdown of relationship. You, you want a coping mechanism that allows continued communication. And I, I have a good one to suggest to you. I love this one. And this is the art of taking a break. All right. Do you ever, do you ever start having an argument and you start to feel overwhelmed and that feeling comes up that you become very angry and hurt and you want to get control over what's happening? Maybe your partner is raising her voice or, um, you can see on her face that she's thinking about you, you know, maybe she doesn't like you so much and it's starting to give you adrenaline. Okay, that's your signal that you're getting dysregulated. I have this really beautiful signal that I'm getting dysregulated. My nose starts getting numb and it starts happening even before I'm aware there's a problem. So it's this really great signal. And in the dysregulation boot camp, which you may have taken, um, we have that, you know, I teach people to start like getting very, very in touch through like daily, just keeping paper with them and writing down, like, when do you get dysregulated? What sets it off? What are the signs that you're dysregulated? Because if you know it's happening, you can take emergency measures and you have the self-control to do that. Like, I, I feel like I want to bail. I feel like I want to do this hurtful thing, but I'm going to stick around. I'm going to stick around and I'm going to use my tools. Step one, notice that you're dysregulated. Step two, get yourself a little bit of pause. And usually that means taking a break. For me, five minutes is usually enough actually to calm back down. You might need half an hour. You might need even longer. But the important thing is to give yourself a break time that you will actively use to re-regulate without hurting the other person. So here's how you do that. You say, I feel like I'm getting dysregulated. I worry that I'm just going to end up, you know, acting angry and hurting your feelings. And I definitely don't want to do that. Can I have five minutes to just kind of pull myself together? So you're asking for a favor. You're being transparent. You're taking responsibility. You're not saying you've got me all dysregulated. Nobody wants to hear that even if it's true. So, so you ask for some time to pull yourself together and you give a time when you're going to come back. When are you going to come back? So if it's five minutes, you say, could we come back together here in five minutes and continue this conversation? Now validate them. Say, I really do want to have this conversation. I do want to hear what you have to say, but I just, I need a few minutes to kind of pull myself together so that I can really be present for you. And, you know, most people can say yes to that. Sometimes, you know, sometimes a person feels impatient with it. It's like, oh, come on, just sit here, just have the conversation. But you can talk your way through it. And anybody who's been through a blowout with you will start to have an incentive to go ahead and give you the five minutes. <laughs> Hopefully it's not going to come to that. So you take a break. Now, while you're taking that break, you don't just go look at your phone. You know, you don't just go storm around and stomp and think how terrible they are. You use your tools. So there's an emergency set of tools and then there's something a little bit more durable. The emergency set of tools is the emergency measures to re-regulate. And I'll go ahead and put a link to that. You can download it and have a copy for yourself. But it's stuff like washing your hands, um, squeezing yourself into a corner so your nervous system can feel a hug, uh, stomping your feet and saying to yourself, left, right, left, right, sitting in a chair and feeling the weight of your body. You're just doing emergency measures to bring yourself back from a 
totally like a nervous system going amok back into feeling yourself. And it's, a, it's pretty effective too. Then um, if you have more, that's if you have like one minute, you can do those things. If you have five minutes, you can actually get some paper and a pen and you can start to write your fears and resentments. Probably it's going to be resentment. I am resentful at name of partner here because I have fear they're saying da, 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 da. And you start getting that on paper and you don't even have to make it legible and you're not going to read it to them. You're letting it out. You're getting it on paper to take the electricity out of it. You're draining it of its monster power. And all it is is a bunch of fear and resentment. Now it might be important and it might be pointing to, you know what, this person's no good. You don't want to be with them. That's possible. That's a possible outcome. I'm not saying that you just like discard all your impressions of everything, but you take all of it, all the fear and resentment and get it on paper and then either ask for it to be removed. I, I described the technique in the link. You should take the course. Don't, don't let me give you this shoddy, like quick explanation. Take the course. You can learn it and try it in 40 minutes. That way you're not acting crazy. And I don't mean you're crazy, but have you ever talked to somebody who's just completely like flipped out about something and they're absolutely sure that what you meant by what you said is that they're awful and you're trying to tell them, but they can't hear you. So you don't want to come at somebody with that energy and nobody, nobody wants to hear us like that either. So you take it to the paper. That's where that intense stuff goes. And even if all you have is five minutes, what's ready to come out of your mouth after that, when you explain what's going on or say what it is you want to say, is going to be ever so much cleaner and calmer and something that they can hear. You might need 10 minutes or 15 minutes for that. You might need to also meditate afterwards. But if you're in the middle of a conflict, like leaving for too long can make the person feel abandoned. And remember, we don't want to make them feel abandoned. We want them to trust us. We want them to stay in communication with us because that's how we're going to build closeness and intimacy. No matter what the CPTSD is telling you that punishing them, that's what it tells you. CPTSD will say, I'll show them. I'll show them how it feels. Now they're going to be sorry they said what they said. I'm not going to talk to them. I, I've been there. I know that feeling. And it's not, it's the trauma talking. You don't want to do that. Don't listen to your trauma. Don't ever punish people. Don't do it. Just try to stay straightforward and communicating where you are, doing the least harm possible with your words. So that's it. You need an actual proper break sometimes. And I think you'll find that if you can take a break and re-regulate, the need for silence and punishing is going to go way down. So that need for a break is nervous system. That's not you being a bad person. Punishing people, that's, that's, what, that's how we're bad people. We don't, <laughs> but our worst behavior comes out when we're dysregulated. So I think you'll find when you are re-regulated, when you've mastered re-regulation, your worst traits are going to just calm way down. You're rarely going to see them again when you've mastered re-regulation. So I hope that helps. This is I'm telling you, this is relationship gold. It makes all the difference. Give it a try and come back and tell me how it went. I want to hear about it. Now, if anybody listening has something that you'd like me to answer on Ask the Fairy, send me an email. Send it to hello at crappychildhoodfairy.com and put in the subject line, Ask the Fairy. That tells me that you've given your permission for me to talk about it in a video. I will only use a fake name for you and you can even suggest one for me if you like. And if you like this topic, I want to point you over to this video right here. I picked it out because it's kind of a continuation of this topic, goes a little deeper. And I will see you very soon.